Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So the last time we left off, we added another tower button for our ice tower here. So now we can make both the blue cannon tower, or the tower cannon blue, and the uh, ice tower. You can see the ice tower slows down the enemies, does a little bit of damage. In fact, if I was going to balance it, and this is way too early for game balancing, I would uh, have the ice tower do less damage than that, and just have it more be like a slow utility tower. And so I mentioned in the last video that right now we have modify cache minus 20. And what that means is, if you recall, we're printing in the console our current money. Uh, so I believe we start at 200. And if I place one of these, we're down to 180. Another one, 160. And ice tower, 140, 120. And what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that both of the towers cost the same amount. They both cost 20. And the reason that is is because of right here, we just have a solid, or not a solid, but a static value of 20. Uh, obviously, we want to change it so that each tower costs a different amount. Uh, there's not many tower games out there that everything costs the same amount of money. So that is a pretty easy uh, uh, change that we can make. In fact, the last video I kind of hinted at how we can do that. Uh, first, we're going to go to the tower type class here, and we're going to add a new value. We have the textures, the projectile type, damage, range, float, firing speed, and now we also have the cost. And you can name that whatever you want, more appropriately, tower cost. Uh, that's up to you. But cost, short and sweet. We need to make a new integer to hold it, uh, which let's put over here after range. Cost. We can set in the constructor this dot cost equals cost. And lastly, we need to set the cost value for each of the towers. So we have cannon red, which is really defunct, but I'm just kind of hesitant to delete it. Uh, not a huge point to delete it right now. Uh, we have the cannon blue. And we have the cannon ice. So at the very end here, after the range, uh, I'll make the cost for this zero because we don't use it. The cannon blue, I will make 15. And for the cannon ice, I'll make it 20. So now that we have our tower type updated, the next thing to do is to go to our tower class here. Because if we go to our player class here, uh, obviously what we're going to do here is use our temp tower. We have no way to get the cost, right? Uh, we don't have access to the tower type at all from within the player class. Uh, actually, can we do get type? Is that a getter we have? Get? No, we don't have that. So what we're going to do is go to the tower class here. And first we need to store it from the tower type in here. See how we have the range and the textures and the type stored from the type? We need to do the same thing with our cost. So up here in the integers, after range, just make a new variable for cost. And right below range right here, say this dot cost equals type dot cost. And we still don't have access to it in the player class because there's no getter. Uh, see these integers are all private. So we need to make a getter to access that variable. So at the very bottom here below our get target, we're going to make public int get cost, open brackets, return cost. There we go. Uh, tower type is good. Tower is good. Uh, back to our player class. We're going to modify cache temp tower dot get cost. So now instead of just having 20 here, it'll look at the tower type indirectly and it will look at the cost for each tower. And uh, it's a pretty, pretty good, efficient way of doing that, I think. Uh, let's go ahead and try it out here. Press play. And look at our uh, our money down here at the bottom left. So we're down to 215 now. Oh, wait. <laughs> All right. Uh, so make that a negative. There we go. Before we were actually getting money every time you place a tower, which would be a different kind of game. Uh, not the one that I'm going for here. But, you know, if you want to do that, go for it. Everyone just gets richer all the time. Sounds like a fun game to me. So we go ahead and place one of these down to 185. Uh, it's going to be 170, 155, and we'll try one of these. It should be down to 135. Yep, 115. So you can see that's an easy way to change the cost per tower. Um, obviously, money doesn't really have much value right now because uh, we still need to, uh, you know, fix the way that we get money from killing enemies. It's a little, little weird right now. I think I don't think it's actually working properly. Um, and we start in an arbitrary 200 cash. I mean, maybe you don't, maybe your game's not the same as mine, but uh, I know I need to get money. I need to 
make it more valuable, uh, give it more value. So maybe next episode we'll work on uh, tuning up the cache system uh, for our game and also maybe do some UI changes. In fact, this is an excellent time on Patreon, I haven't done this in a long time, to make a poll. So why not? Uh, we'll have a few options in the poll. We can either uh, work on the cache system and balance that a little bit. We can work on the menu, so maybe make this like a pop-up you know, drop down menu, so they're not just kind of sitting on top of our tiles up here, looking kind of out of place. Um, or some third option I haven't thought of yet. So for those of you that are kind of newer to the channel, um, we've done this in the past where I will post a poll on patreon.com slash indie programmer. There should be like a link on the screen right here and also in the description or the comments. Uh, hopefully you can find it. And just the lowest pledge amount is all that's necessary. I think it's like a dollar a month and they'll give you access to the poll. Uh, I'll make like a straw poll. You can vote on what you want to do next, and I will look at the voting results, and whatever wins is what we'll work on next for our game. And I think at this point in development, I'm going to start doing that more often because there's lots of different um, paths we can fork onto or fork out to to choose what to develop next. Like, obviously... Okay, my timer went off. I guess my my chicken's done. I gotta go get that from the oven. Uh, obviously, in the beginning, we could just, like, do one thing. Like, let's make a square. You know, you can't be like, hmm, should we make a square? Or should we you know, make waves, you know, we had to do one step at a time. Now we kind of have a, a fleshed out game uh, somewhat so we can choose. Do we want to work on the UI next or the cache or, you know, balancing? So yeah, I'm kind of blabbering on. I'm going to make a poll on patreon.com slash indie programmer. You guys can vote on it and I will take that, uh, those results and the next episode will be based on that. So thanks a lot for watching and I will see you guys next time on Indie Programmer. Happy New Year, by the way.